Hey guys, this is Brian for Better Chess Training. In today's video, uh, I'd love to share one of my favorite games, and that is Paul Morphy against uh, Duke Carl and Count Isouard uh, from Paris, 1858. This game was played, I guess, during an opera, and so it has hence been known as the opera game. It's one of the most well-known games in chess history, and I'm going to discuss it in going to try to look at it from an instructive point of view. So uh, let's get started here. White plays e4. Black plays e5. Very common uh, opening here. Knight to f3, attacking the e5 pawn. And black plays d6. This is called the uh, Philidor defense. And basically black is um, bolstering this e5 pawn. Okay, and of course, uh, the most common response here is knight to c6. And uh, even though d6 is not as common, it's definitely a, a respectable opening. White plays d4, immediately attacking the center. You have to remember one of our opening principles of trying to control the center. And uh, white does that here. And black here plays bishop to g4. And this is actually going to cause a lot of problems for him. On the surface, it looks like it pins this knight, but it has a couple down, a couple defects. Uh, first of all, uh, black doesn't have anything to attack the pin piece. So a lot of times we want to uh, pin a piece if we have a chance to uh, attack it. So it does not accomplish that. Also, this is a good pattern for you to remember uh, when this bishop is developed early. It's not that this is a blunder um, altogether, although in this case it does cause a lot of uh, black's problems in the rest of the game. Uh, but here, by developing this piece, it leaves the protection of the b7 pawn. And in some cases, uh, we can take advantage of that. And we'll see that a little later in this game. Uh, instead of that, what black could have played, or what is more commonly played, is uh, e takes d4, followed by knight takes d4, and then knight f6 to attack this pawn, and then knight c3. And we won't go too much further into it right here, but uh, we can see here that uh, white has a nice spatial edge with this e4 pawn, and just a slight lead in development uh, because of his uh, first move. But black has a solid position and doesn't have any uh, real weaknesses at this point. So this is uh, definitely a uh, fine, fine position for black as well, even though white uh, tends to have the edge according to theory. Okay, let's go back to the game. After bishop to g4, uh, d takes e5 was played, and then black plays bishop to f3. Uh, just going back real quick, if black were to retake on e5, then um, something like queen takes d8 check, king takes d8, and then knight to e5 wins a pawn, as well as uh, continuing has some continuing pressure, because we're threatening now this fork on f7 forking the king and rook, as well as attacking this bishop. So here, uh, white would definitely have the edge. So uh, black avoided that with bishop takes f3, and then queen takes f3, and d takes e5, restoring the material balance. So even though the pawn structure is uh, symmetrical and material is even, uh, we have a couple uh, points here, and one is that a white is slightly ahead in development, and as we'll see, he has something that's called the initiative. And the initiative is basically uh, has the, I would say the, I would say attack. It's not always the attack, but kind of has the pressure. Uh, black is, or in this case, black who does not have the initiative uh, now has to defend, I guess, you could, or has to respond to white's, to white's moves. And uh, the initiative is... Uh, a temporary advantage or a temporary, I guess you could say, strategic element, but it's something that often can be transformed into some other type of advantage, and we'll see that in this game. So here, uh, white plays bishop to c4, and here he's threatening, simply threatening checkmate on f7, and there's a few ways to defend against this. Um, black chose knight to f6, but we'll see in a moment that that's not the best defense. Uh, let me show you a couple other options. Black could have played knight or queen to f6, uh, directly contesting the queen and blocking uh, its path to f7. And it also could have, also could have played bishop 
or I'm sorry, queen to d7, which would also protect this f7 pawn. And we'll see in a second why that's superior. But uh, in the game, black played knight to f6, and white played queen to b3. And here he's attacking both the f7 uh, pawn as well as the b7 pawn uh, with a double attack. And now we can see why uh, moving the queen to queen to f6 or queen to d7 would be superior because uh, the queen would be defending the f7 pawn. And then uh, in this case, white or black would only have to deal with one weakness. So um, these double attacks, this, uh, this tactical theme is a very effective one because uh, black now has difficulty in defending both of them. So uh, what black does here is he plays queen to e7. So he's going to protect this pawn and give up the b7 pawn. And his idea is that if white plays queen takes b7, which is a, a fine move, then black has queen to b4 check. It's the only way to uh, defend uh, or prevent this rook from being taken. And after queen takes b4, bishop to b4 check, and a move like c3, after black moves back, uh, white can uh, develop with something like knight to d2 with heading to f3 and has a very nice game, is a head material, and it, it continues to have, um, you know, continues to have pressure as well because he's, he's, he hasn't lost anything for it. A lot of times when we uh, win material, we lose the initiative or we lose the uh, pressure because we have to take that time to to deal with, you know, we, we win material and then gives black a turn because we took that turn to take the material. It gives black a turn to maybe counterattack or, um, or do something else to, to, to gain the initiative as well. So uh, as we'll see during the game, uh, there's this trade-off between time, uh, you know, taking the move to do something, and 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 material having uh, extra force on the board, and uh, we'll see how how Morphe uses that to his advantage here, uh, trading some of that material for time or for uh, other advantages. Okay, let's get back to the game. So what White played was knight to c3. He did not take this pawn on b7. Uh, for some of the reasons we talked about. Instead, he continued with his development. And this is a characteristic of Morphe as a player, is that he wanted to develop his pieces above all and then use those pieces in, in concert with each other to attack his opponent. So uh, black plays c6, uh, and the idea here is that he's defending now this b7 pawn with the queen. And then white plays bishop to g5. So this does a couple things. It develops this bishop, and it pins this knight, Okay, so this knight can't move at the moment because otherwise uh, black would lose the queen. Also, it allows white to, if he wants to, castle long or castle queenside, as well as uh, being able to castle kingside. So now he has a choice depending on what he needs to do in the game. And now we can see some of the problems that uh, black's opening has provided him here. It's very, it's only, we're only on the ninth move, but already uh, black is almost uh, losing. Uh, Black would like to do a few things. Black would like to castle, but to do that he would have to either develop his knight to castle long, uh, which doesn't look too great with the queen bearing down here, um, or to castle on the king's side, he'd have to move this bishop. Unfortunately, uh, because of uh, having to defend, the queen moved to uh, e7 is now blocking that bishop. Now, this knight can't move either. If this might, knight were to move to... Uh, d7, then the b7 pawn can be taken by white. If this knight moves, um, if this knight were to move to uh, a6, then we have, uh, you know, still have an advantage after bishop takes a6, uh, b takes a6, and then, um, you know, a variety of things can happen. For example, castling, and now we see that white has a lot of initiative, has a lot of pressure, and black's structure is uh, is poor and has a lot of weaknesses here with the a6 pawn and the c6 pawn. Okay, so in a way, if we go back to the game position, uh, black is in, is in Zugzwang, and this is something that Bobby Fischer uh, pointed out in his notes on this game. So what does black do? Black plays b5, and his idea here, of course, is just to try to put the question to this bishop and maybe get it off of this dangerous diagonal. But as I said before, uh, Morphe uh, favored 
uh, what we would might call dynamic factors into position. He wanted, he, you know, he wanted to develop his pieces. He wanted to maintain the pressure, maintain an attack, and he was willing to give up material to do that. So uh, he does so here with a beautiful move. Knight takes b5, and after white or after black takes back, he continues with bishop takes b5 check. So we have a few choices here, and they're all bad at this point. So uh, even though white is uh, down material because of his lead in development and his uh, initiative, his attack, he uh, is winning the game here. And it's almost forced here because of this, this poor king, black king's uh, position here. Uh, he tries to block with knight b to d7. Let me show you a couple other options here. Of course, if he blocks with queen to d7, he is going to um, lose the queen. If he moves his king to d8, then white gets his rook into the game with uh, castling queenside. Okay, so so uh, knight b to d7 is probably the the, uh, the the better the better evil, I guess you could say. Well, black continues with his policy of bringing his pieces into the attack. He castles long. Now he's bearing down here. Remember, this knight is still this knight is still pinned to this queen, so it's fairly useless in defense. Uh, rook to d8, defending this knight. And then he plays rook takes d7. And this, when you have a pin like this, uh, this is a good maneuver to, to try. After rook takes d7, then uh, again, black is actually up in terms of material because white uh, gave up the exchange, a rook for a knight. However, because of this pin, uh, white can simply bring in another piece to attack. And he does so with rook to d1. Okay. Uh, what's beautiful about Morphy is that even though he was known as uh, kind of an attacking player, he was very patient. He didn't, uh, he, he sacrificed material, but he, he took time to bring his pieces in. And, and you can see all of his pieces are playing key roles in this game. So let's see what happens. Black plays queen to e6, making room for this uh, bishop as well as getting out of the pin, and hopefully, hopefully hoping to trade uh, one of these attacking pieces. However, it's, it's kind of too late here. Bishop takes d7 check, and knight takes d7. Otherwise, you'd lose the queen after queen takes d7. And here we have a maiden two. So if you want, uh, pause the video and see if you can figure it out. Okay, I hope you saw queen to b8 check. Now he sacrifices the queen. Because after knight takes b8, rook to d8 is checkmate. The rook is defended by the bishop. And black has nowhere to go. So beautiful game uh, by Paul Morphy, one of many. And uh, one of my first, uh, actually, uh, this was the first game I ever annotated uh, online. Back in 2000, I had another chess site called uh, Brian's Chess World, which is no longer functioning. But it, uh, it, this was the first game that I, that I annotated for that site. So it was kind of, uh, kind of nice to share it with you today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please press the like button. And if you haven't done so already, subscribe to the channel for future updates. Uh, if you have any questions about this game, please leave a comment. And I'd love your, to hear your comments in any case. And let me know what you think. And I'll be sure to respond to them. Otherwise, I uh, hope to see you soon. And good luck with your chess.